So one of the reasons that I really like uh, modeling using this technique is that within um, the deformers, uh, the primitives are still uh, native primitives. So you can still go in there and change the amount of segments. You can change if they've got fillets, what sort of radius your fillets have got. Um, so you've got a lot of flexibility to change uh, the general sort of shape and detailing of your, um, your model as you go along. Okay, so the next bit I'm going to do is uh, the, um, the handle. And uh, <clears throat> again, I'm going to start with a, a primitive. Now, if I just jump into this perspective view for a second, the, the handle on this is basically a cylinder. But if we look at our primitives, we've got a cylinder. Um, let's just move this out of here. We've got uh, another primitive called a capsule, which is a, a rounded cylinder. And we've got another one, which is called a oil tank, which is here. If I pull this out. And this is, again, it's a cylinder, but it's got a flattened, um, sort of hard-edged, uh, but rounded top and bottom. The capsule is, well, just rounded. Um, but uh, I'm going to stick with a cylinder because I can turn on the fillet, and then that can be whatever size I want it to be. Uh, so there's a bit more flexibility there. So I'm going to stick with a cylinder again. So let's just delete these two here. And let's grab the cylinder. Again, only moving on this blue axis. And let's move this into place and position it. Let's move it. Um, well, actually, I'm going off my rule now. I'm bringing it down uh, off the blue axis, obviously, because it sits below uh, this um, row of uh, cylinders that we've used here. So let's grab my rotate tool and just carefully rotate it just on this axis. Let's select it and change its radius and change its height. And what I'm going to do is go to the caps tab and let's put a bit of a radius on here. And let's just move this down maybe a little bit more of a radius. As I said, the good thing about this is I can change this later if I want to. Um, maybe make the height a little bit taller. And just move it up on that axis. There we go. Okay, so the cylinder's about in the right place. We're going to use another FFD, similar to this one, to sort of sculpt this into shape. Now the other thing is, if we look at this in the perspective view, this is supposed to be the handle for this ray gun. If we look at it and sort of spin around, this looks pretty thick. What I'm actually going to do with this um, FFD that I'm going to put around uh, the handle is I might actually do a little bit of sort of extra sculpting and just shape this a little better so that if it was a real gun, it would fit in your hand slightly better. So let's create an FFD for this and um, start uh, shaping it. So let's go to Create Deformer FFD. Now, it's only a single object we're deforming, so we don't need any group. We can just make it a child of that cylinder, and then we can fit it to the parent. Now again, I'm going to add an extra row of uh, points in my FFD, so that's the y-axis. Let's add a row along there. Now, my view's starting to get a little bit cluttered with these models, and then I've got the cage from this FFD hanging around over the top, and I've got the other one here. I really want to just be able to work on this without getting all this other stuff in the way. So there's a really handy tool over on the left-hand side of your interface. Um, I'm going to pop off this little menu here just by clicking on the bar across the top. Uh, and this is the viewport solo button, which will solo uh, an object when you work on it. Now, the good thing about this is if I select my cylinder, in the hierarchy is the cylinder and the FFD, I can solo the hierarchy, and just that hierarchy of objects gets uh, uh, is shown, and the rest is hidden. So that just makes that um, a really quick and easy way to um, work on a single object or on a hierarchy of objects. Okay, so let's start shaping this thing. Let's go into the points mode, because we're going to move the points around. Let's grab the lasso tool, and let's start with this bottom part of the um, of the handle. I'm going to go to my side view to see this a little more clearly. Now this curve around the front part, it looks pretty good. But at the back here, we need to create this slant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these points that are here, and nothing's selecting because I don't have my FFD selected. There we go. And now I'm just going to drag along this axis, and I can see that curvature there is now starting to line up a little better with this handle. And if I want to, I can, if I grab that properly, I can grab these points, I can drag them down a little bit. Now the handle's sort of cutting in a little bit there, so let's grab these points, maybe pull them out that way a little bit. 
And again, it's looking a little angular. It's not a nice smooth curve. So let's just have a look in our perspective view. So that is the again, it's that fillet on the on the cylinder. So let's select that cylinder, go to its cap, and let's turn the segments up on that fillet till it's looking really smooth. Looks pretty good there for now. Um, so that looks all right. Um, okay, so now that's the that's the bottom part done. I'm happy with that. But let's work on the rest of this because uh, it's a little um, clunky looking. So what I'm going to do is select the middle section of the points. Uh, again, make sure you've got the right object selected. And uh, I'm going to scale these inwards. So when you scale these, make sure that you are just scaling on this horizontal x-axis um, to start with anyway. Um, <clears throat> now if you want to, you could scale a little bit along this axis and you can make it a little more sculpted. And that looks kind of cool. Um, the base is a little chunky here, so maybe I'll grab my lasso and select these points around here. Maybe I'll just scale all these inwards just a little bit. Um, and that's looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, what I might just do is turn off the viewport soloing because I want to see how the top of this is intersecting with my ray gun. So uh, if I go back to um, uh, solo off, which is that button there. I'll keep this panel active because I might use it again. And I can see there's my handle sitting into there. That's looking pretty good. Uh, let me just grab that and I'll solo it again. I'm just going to grab the top part of this. Uh, again, make sure you've got the right thing selected. It really does help. Okay, solo off. So if I want to, now that I've grabbed those points, I can pull them down a little bit. Um, Maybe just up a little bit, or I can scale them a little. And if I want to, I can just sort of play around with this so that it kind of goes reasonably smoothly into the rest of the body of the ray gun. I'm pretty happy with that, to be honest. I'm, I'm good with that, and I think I'll leave it at that. So that's fine. Okay, I've finished with that CFD, so let's go out of point editing mode. Let's go back to model mode. Um, one thing I will do, just looking at this handle, uh, again, this is a little low um, on the polys, on the subdivisions. And it's a little angular looking. So let's grab that cylinder and add some more divisions in the height. Um, here we go, height segments. And let's put a whole bunch in there so that looks good. Something like that. I can always tweak that later on if I need to. But that looks pretty good. It's nice and smooth. And uh, the handle's looking good. Okay, so that's that bit done. The next bit is to work on the fin on the back. Um, and I'm going to use, again, another FFD. And for this one, what I'm going to do is start off, because um, if we have a look at the image, you can just navigate to that. Uh, it's kind of this shark fin type shape. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to start off with a cube, and um, I'm going to use an FFD to taper it and bend it over. So let's have a go at that. Let's create a cube. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift it into place. I'm going to rotate it a little bit so the base kind of matches the angle of the back of that ray gun. So let's rotate this around a little bit. So it's kind of matching where it sits in there. And now I'm going to add a few more divisions into my cube. Let's put, um, what do we want, uh, three in the y-axis. I can't even see that on that view. Let's go back to here. Here we go. So I want some in that axis. Let's have a couple uh, on the Z axis. And I don't really need any on this axis, I don't think. Let's have a go at this and see how it looks. Okay, so uh, what I can do as well is I can fill up my cube. That's going to be really handy because the um, this has a rounded edge on it, this fin. So a fillet's going to be really helpful here. So let's um, put a bit of a fillet on there. And um, let's just start modeling with this and just see what happens. Now, the other thing is it doesn't need to be that wide by any stretch at all. So that is the x-axis. Let's make that a whole bunch narrower. Let's put that down somewhere like that. Again, we can always change these. As I said before, this is the great thing about this, this type of modeling is that it's a primitive shape with a deformer on top of it. So you can always go back and change the primitive shape. So let's create the deformer. Here's another FFD. Let's make that a child of the cube. 
there it is and let's fit it there we go onto there and again i'm going to use that solo tool so let's select the cube solo the hierarchy and now let's select our ffd and go into points mode and start modeling this thing now what i want to do is make this into sort of a more of a triangular shape that's bent over so what i can do is start off by selecting all these points across the top and let's scale these inwards just down that way and let's have a look at our side view so we can see where these are going to need to go now this cube is probably a little too big but let's just deal with it using our FFD sorry there's a notification on my phone there let's um, grab these rotate them around a little further and again just be careful of the axis you're rotating on, rotating on. you don't want these flying all over the place you want them just to be going in just one axis so let's rotate those over and scale them down again and let's do the same with this next row of points let's grab the lasso tool grab this next row of points let's scale them down a little bit this way and i can see these black lines starting to shape into this sort of you know shark fin type shape uh, let's rotate these round a little and let's pull this base into shape and then start working on a few more of these points let's grab it and pull it in somewhere there so now I can see I'm starting to get somewhere so let's grab these points and I'm just going to grab um, each point sort of uh, section by section now um, let's just smooth that line out there a little bit select those there we go and now let's start working on this point so let's grab the top parts there Oop, I've mistakenly deselected Okay, let's grab that pull that down this is the center at the top let's pull that up that way and this is the next one down let's pull that that way now we're really starting to get the shape working and this is starting to really look the way i want it to look and this point here maybe we'll shift that around a little bit more like that so basically we're just grabbing these clusters of points and dragging them around until we're starting to create the shape that we want there. If we look in this perspective view, that's definitely starting to look a little like that sort of fin shape. Uh, now again, it looks a little maybe a little thick that way, or maybe I want it to taper. So what I could do is grab all these points across the top and maybe I scale those down this way a little and maybe I grab all these points through the middle and again this is where we're taking a little bit of artistic license we're not looking exactly like the image um, now we've got a bit of a sort of a, a taper going in with we'll that's kind of cool kind of like that um, so that's looking good but again this doesn't have enough divisions it's looking a little hard so let's go back to the cube let's add some more those were y-axis segments i think yep so let's add a bunch more in there and a bunch of z-axis segments Again, we can keep these re reasonably regular sort of squares. They're stretched out a little bit, so they're not going to be exactly squares, but they're pretty close. And that's starting to look like a pretty good shape. So let's just unsolo this. And that's looking pretty good on there. And it's kind of matching with our image pretty much. It's pretty close. So that's looking good. So uh, all we've got left to do now is uh, the trigger and a few details down the side of it. 